All right, this video is for notes 3.2.2. Um, I think probably in some places it says notes um, 3.2 day two. Uh, so either way, it's, it means the same thing. So what we're going to talk about today is residuals, and we'll continue talking about the least squares regression line and how we really arrive at the least squares regression line. The residual is simply the difference between the actual or what we call the observed value of a data point. Uh, it, again, th that would be the uh, response variable, right? The observed value of the Y or the response variable. Uh, so it's the difference between uh, the response variable Y's value and the predicted Y value, what we call the Y hat. And so it's important to remember that it's a y minus y hat there instead of um, instead of y hat minus y. All right, so the residual, if we look like if we look at a best fit line here, and then these red dots are our data values, the best fit lines going through them, the vertical segments here sort of represent that residual. So it makes sense then if you think the y, in this case, the observed value is above the predicted value, which would be represented by the y coordinate of that little point there. And so y minus y hat is positive, and the residual is above the prediction line. Uh, this point here, say, uh, the observed value is below the prediction line. So the y... Um, is less than the y hat, which would be up here. So y minus y hat would be a negative value, and that's represented by the fact that this vertical line is down below. Now, um, if we look at residuals, and you know some are positive, some are negative, so when we add them up, we get zero. And so that doesn't really help us in the calculation part of it, right? Zero makes everything go to zero when you multiply it and everything else. So what we really do, and this is why the least squares regression line is called the least squares regression line, is we take each of those residuals and we square them. And the whole idea is we want this line to be the line that minimizes the squares of all of those. It's not going to be zero this time, like the residuals here are, end up being zero because you have some above and some below. They cancel each other out. Here, they're not canceling each other out. And so the y, um, so the, the residuals squared, so that's why we call it the least squares regression line. We want this line to be the one that takes the square of the residuals and makes it as small as possible. All right, now you can look, um, if you click on, um, if you click on this correlation um, you know, link, uh, if you open up your, the PDF for these notes, you can actually click on this link and it will take us to, um, it will take us to um, this. Um, and I have it open already, so I was playing around with it. But um, this is an, a little applet that comes with our All right, so when you hit the correlation regression uh, link in your notes, this is where it takes us. And so this is a little applet that comes with our uh, textbook. And you can play around. And you've, you've seen uh, images that I've done screen captures from on this. But you can um, just click, and it creates points. You can click on the point again, and it'll disappear. You can take the point and move it around. Um, and, you know, like let's say we add a couple more. And then we can also click on the least squares regression. It puts it in there for you. Uh, you can also show the residuals if you want as well. All right. So you can investigate this. Um, you know, what does moving a point do? Um, you know, notice a point out here makes the correlation really strong. A moving the point over here weakens that correlation. Um, what would uh, putting a point up here do versus putting a point kind of in line with it? You know, so a point up here strengthens the, the correlation. A point over here will weaken it, right? Okay, so you can play around with that. You can clear it um, and start over. Um, so, you know, feel free to play around with that. Um, like I said, hit the link. You'd have to be on the um, PDF 
the actual uh, electronic version of PDF, uh, and it will take you to this, and you can play around with it a little bit. Um, and then also, there's a link here. You don't have access to this. This is a file that's on my computer, uh, but I'm going to open it here and show you. All right, this software is a truly really old piece of software of mine that I've had for years. Um, but I'm using it to help us sort of visualize um, this best fit line and the least squares thing. So I have a bunch of points here, and I have just a line. This isn't actually the best fit line. It's just a line that I've created that kind of goes between them. And um, so if we want to look at sort of the residuals, uh, we could turn those on, and you could see. So uh, on, ultimately, we want those the, the line, the best fit line that would go through those to make those residuals as small as possible. Um, but remember that the residuals will often cancel each other out. So we want to look at taking those residuals and squaring them. So visually, you can see here, uh, I've taken that re residual and created a square for each one. And so um, that's sort of like whatever line we do we want that line to go through those points so that the squares are the of those um, residuals are as small as possible and clearly that's not it um, but we could sort of move the point the, the line around you could see at some point we would hit that minimum value the minimum of the squares if we added all those squares up we want to minimize that um, and so that is what the least squares regression is doing, right? That's why we call it the least squares regression. We want the line to be the one that makes the residual square, that area, as small as possible. Um, and let's get back to our example for the, um, the F-150. Um, pickup trucks. So the example says here, back to the F-150 mileage versus price example, uh, we had a truck with um, 70,583 miles and it sold for $21,994. So calculate and interpret that truck's residual and then um, and then I'm also giving you there what the uh, best fit equation or least squares regression line equation is here. So find the re, uh, the residual. So the first thing we want to do is we well we know the um, we know how much it's sold for. Uh, so we know the observed y value. We need to find the predicted value. So plug this x in to the equation and find the y hat or predicted y value for a car with 7, 70,583 miles. All right, so we plug that 70,583 into the equation. We subtract it from y. Um, when we plug it into the equation, the predicted y is 26,758 dollars. And so we subtract y minus y hat, we get a negative value. All right, so that means the residual is negative. That means the truck sold, actually sold for less, $4,764 less than the model predicted because the observed value is down below, just like we saw up here, okay? All right, um, we, we can fit a line to the data but is a line a most appropriate model? So we're going to have a test, like just because there's data, it doesn't mean necessarily a linear model is the most appropriate. So um, we're going to investigate that next. So here we have all of the, the trucks numbered, the mileage, the price, the predicted value. I have one missing residual. So calculate that residual. This is a car with a uh, truck with 8,000 359 miles, what would its residual be? And then interpret that residual as well. So plot, you know, stop, stop the video, calculate that, and then um, proceed. All right, so the, um, the residual is negative 5,004. 
The at me, it's negative, so that means it sold for less. It sold for $5,004 less than what the model predicted, okay? All right, so the actual price for this truck with 8,359 miles was $5,004 below the expected amount, um, predicted amount, you know, by the, the prediction model. Okay, let's look at, let's talk about this graph up here too. This is called a residual plot. So getting back to kind of what we were talking about up here is, you know, is a line appropriate, right? Or is the data curved? And so what we do is this plot is called the residual plot. It is the plot of the x values, the, the um, explanatory variable, and then the y for these points is not the y value, not the price, but it's residual. So it's the plot of the mileage plotted against the residuals. And so what we're looking for here is a random scattering, really no pattern, a random pattern, if you will, but not a, a curve. And we'll see that kind of on the next page, uh, what happens, you know, what it looks like when it's bad. So this is exactly what we want. We want a random scattering. Um, that means there's no overall pattern. The line fits the data, you know, fairly well. You look back and we see a scatter plot of this on the last notes. Um, but this is not a scatter. This is a scatter plot, but it's it's a scatter plot of x values against the residuals. But don't call this a scatter plot. This, as a result, this is a very special type of scatter plot, and we call it a residual plot. So it's the x values plotted against the residuals. Okay. All right. So now let's look at um, examples for you know why we need to check to see if um, a resid if a line is an appropriate model. Okay, so I made up some data. I didn't give this any context. I just made up six data values, uh, x va six x values, um, and then I made up some y values. Okay, so if we plotted it in a scatter plot, and I put a best fit line to it. That looks pretty good. If we look at the residual, you can see it's a random scattering. I mean, there's only six points, so you're not going to see a nice perfect scattering, but there's no overall pattern. It's It bounces back and forth. The line kind of fits between them all. It's This, is, this tells us that a line, um, a linear model is appropriate. Now also, I mean, it's nice to see a, such a big R value as well, um, really close to one, but that alone is not an indication, right? Just because our R value is really close to one, has a really strong correlation, does not necessarily mean that a line is an appropriate model. So be careful with that, right? The R value is evidence. If a linear model is appropriate, then we know that it really fits the linear model well. However, look at this graph down here, the next one. So again, I made up six data values, I made up six, um, six Y values, and I plotted them. Again, this kind of looks good. Look, the R value is still pretty high. It's 0.97, just as high as it was before. But you can kind of see it even here. There's sort of a curve to this data, and it's really obvious when you plot the residual plot. So remember, it's the X values plotted against the residuals. So we start low, go up high, and come back low again. There's a strong curve here. There's definitely a pattern that we didn't see up in this example. So this is um, telling us that a linear model is not appropriate. So it doesn't even make sense to calculate your R because your R, the measure of the correlation, is the measure of the strength of the linear model. Just because it's high, close to one in this case, does not mean that a line is even appropriate. So a linear model is not appropriate here it makes no sense to calculate your R. Correlation means nothing because that, again, correlation is the measure, the strength of a linear model, and it just doesn't mean anything if a linear model is not what we're using. Okay? All right, so let's look at our TI-84, and let's see how we would create a residual plot. All right, it's, it's a little tricky, so let's talk through it. So on your TI-84, 
Um, hopefully you still have in there, um, you want to save this because we're going to use this for a couple different uh, lessons. So the uh, F-150 data uh, in list one, the mileage in list one, and its corresponding prices in list two. So if you don't have that in there, uh, you'll have to go put that back in. It's kind of tedious. Um, that's why I said make sure that you're leaving this data, uh, mileage and price data for the F-150 trucks in your calculators. Uh, so because we're going to need those. Okay. So uh, assuming that's in there, then we want to run the regression line, right? So we've seen this. We've done this before. So run the least squares regression. Um, you know, you're going to hit uh, stat stat go over to calculate go down to number eight and then put your x list of list one your y list of list two and then uh calculate that and you get this um this screen okay now unbeknownst to you when you run a least squares regression the calculator every and it happens every time you run it your calculator stores the residuals for you, creates the a list of residuals and stores it in what we call the resid list. And it's in your calculators without you even knowing it. Okay, so, um, so we've run a regression. You have to run this, even though we don't really need these things per se, we have to run the regression so that the current residual list in our calculators has the residuals for this data. If you ran a linear regression of some previous data, um, the residuals wouldn't match and you'd get an error, probably a dimension error. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to turn on the plots. So go and turn on, go on to second y equals and go into plot one, make sure it's on, create, you know, select scatter plot, this very first one, scatter plot. And then your x list is list one and your y list is list two. Uh, sorry, your y list is probably list two from the last time you did a scatter plot, but highlight list, you know, just put your cursor down over list L2. And then what you want to type is while it's sitting there, type second stat, the second function for stat is lists. And now you notice it's got all of our lists, list one, list two, list three. Scroll down until you find resid, hit enter, and notice it will paste the name of that list right there, resid. Okay, so you you have to have your cursor sitting right there next to Y list hit uh, second stat, that's the list function. Uh, it gives you all the names of all your lists and then go down and find resid. You might have to scroll down. It might show up at the bottom or you might have to scroll down, hit enter, and then it pastes it right there, okay? And so now what it will do is it will create a scatter plot. The X coordinate will be the X uh, the x axis will have the x coordinates for our points. That will be our mileage. And then the y coordinates will be the residuals. Okay. This line going through the middle here is sort of like, if you think about it, it's the best fit line. And so these would be all of the residuals. And so you can see here, there's a, a, a random scattering. So this is a way of, so, and you want to hit zoom nine too, because it probably won't show up. The, the, uh, the window will not be set up right. So you want to um, hit zoom nine and then you'll get your graph. Okay. Uh, remember too, you have to have all your other plots off. You just want, you know, you, it, will, it will give you an error if you try to plot uh, more than one plot here. So make sure that plot two and three are off. Also, uh, go to Y equals, hit the Y equals button and make sure there's no weird equations, um, you know, that it's asking to plot. That could give you an error as well. Okay. So that's how you would do your scatter plot, uh, your residual plot in your, um, in your calculator. Remember, it is a a type of scatter plot. It's X values against the residuals, but don't call this a scatter plot. This is a residual plot, and we call it that. Okay. Um, and then you have some homework. Um, so for number 47, you're going to put in some data, and then um, don't go and do 38 next because then it's going to replace the data 
but then in 49, you're going to need the same data you did with 47. So that's why I'm giving them to you in this order. So do for homework, do 47, and then do 49, because they use the same data set, sets of data. And then 48 uses a different one, so then you can go change that data. Okay? Um, I would probably say you're okay getting rid of L1 and L2. I don't think we're going to use... Uh, the mileage and um, and price data, but maybe just to be safe, um, leave them in your calculators. And then, so for homework, you know, like 47 is going to give you some X and Y data. Put them in list three and list four, and then just put those in when you do your residual, you know, your least squares regression. You just got to remember to use your, that you're using L3 and L4. That would be my suggestion. I'm not sure if we need these again, and so let's not get rid of them just in case we do. Okay, um, and so this again, this is the homework, homework 3.2.2, and that will be due next class.